He said, that's easy. I decide what's right and wrong. He said, I'm the God of my own universe. I said, I'm glad to hear about that, son, because I am going to shoot you in five minutes. He said, you can't do that. I said, oh, yeah, I can. You see, I am the God of my own universe, and I decided it's fine for me to shoot you. You see where that logic would lead in a hurry? If every man did that which was right in his own eyes, like the book of Judges says, serious problems for society, big time. How do you tell right from wrong? Simple question to ask an evolutionist. They don't have a way to tell. I mean, maybe, maybe Osama bin Laden should decide right from wrong. Huh? Maybe Bill Clinton should decide right from wrong, if he has any idea where to find it. I mean, how do you tell right from wrong? Simple. It's real easy to tell right from wrong. Thus saith the Lord. Now see, that is absolute. And the Lord said, Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. Some people either don't know what God says, or maybe they just don't care what God says. But God says, don't do that, okay? <laughs> now if you did it in the past, okay, say, God, I'm sorry, that was dumb, and don't do it again, all right? A lot of teachers don't seem to understand. They just blindly follow the textbook and think they have to teach this evolution theory. No, you don't have to teach this evolution theory, okay? Teachers can teach creation in public schools if they want. We've got a videotape called the Public School Presentation, which deals with all the laws on that about teaching public schools, what, teaching creation in public schools. What happened was Arkansas and Louisiana passed laws to require that creation be taught. The court struck it down in both cases. They said you cannot require that creation be taught. They said the teachers can teach it if they want, but it has to be voluntary on the teacher's part. Even Stephen Gould said, no statute exists in any state to bar instruction in creation science. It could be taught before and it can be taught now. He was commenting on the 1987 Supreme Court decision. What's happened, though, the ACLU, the American Communist Lawyers Union, they have tried really hard to spread the propaganda around that you cannot talk about creation in the public schools, and that's just simply not true. It's always been perfectly fine to teach creation in the public schools. There's never been a law against that at all, okay? But if a teacher gets up in front of their class and a teacher says, okay, kid, listen, listen, you started off like a slime and you slowly evolved to a human. You don't need to be a genius to figure out that teaching is going to destroy some kid's faith in the Bible. And anybody that destroys a child's faith better read what Jesus said about that. He said, whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Anybody that teaches evolution is in trouble when they stand before God. The Bible says, Be not many masters, knowing we shall receive the greater condemnation. It's interesting, though, what happened. Back in the 1950s, the average textbook in America had very little evolution. Two or three thousand words was all. 1957, the Russians beat us in the space race by launching Sputnik, and Americans panicked. How many of you are old enough to remember the panic in America when the Russians were winning the space race? I mean, they had articles in Life magazine, how you can survive fallout. They said the Soviets are ahead of us in science because the Soviets teach evolution. We don't teach it in our schools. I mean, they had articles on how to build your own bomb shelter. People were building them in their backyard, okay, to survive nuclear fallout. Wait a minute. The Soviets are ahead in science because they teach evolution. What does evolution have to do with putting up a satellite? Well, then, in 1959, it was the 100-year anniversary of Darwin's book coming out. And in 1959, Eisenhower asked Congress for a billion dollars to push more evolution into the school system. And he got it. American textbooks were rewritten in the late 50s and early 60s to include more evolution. They called it the Cold War Reconstruction of American Science Education. Our whole science curriculum and other curriculums were rewritten to make sure evolution was taught. And by 1963, the average textbook had 33,000 words about evolution. By 1963, prayer was taken out of our school system. Anybody remember that? Madeline Murray O'Hare? By 1963, we started to see a great rise in premarital sex for every single age bracket. We saw a great rise in uh, sexually transmitted diseases for 10 to 14-year-olds. We saw a great rise in unwed birth rates, a 550% increase in pregnancies. The difference is being aborted. Now, one-third of all the kids born at the hospital are born to a couple that are not married. 
illegitimate children. A third of them. Now listen carefully. If you are one of those, this is for you. Timothy was a half-breed that never should have been born. Timothy's mommy was Jewish. His daddy was Greek. The Jews weren't supposed to marry anybody but Jews. Mama disobeyed. Timothy's the result. But he wanted to serve God, and God said, I'll take you, son. He wrote two books in your Bible. So if your parents messed up, you shut your mouth and quit your whining, and you go serve God with your life, okay? There's no excuses. God will use anybody, okay? The number of unmarried couples living together has increased radically since 1963. God's word hasn't changed. He said, thou shalt not commit adultery. He said, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Jesus said, if you even look in lust, you've committed adultery already in your heart. By the way, ladies, that's why it's important how you dress, okay? My daddy always said, if you're not in business, don't advertise. Okay. Divorce rates have gone crazy in this country. Child abuse is up 2,300%. Illegal drug use up 6,000%. Violent crimes nearly a 1,000% increase. I'm not that old, you know, but I remember the days when you did not have to lock your house. Anybody remember those days? And you left the keys in the ignition all the time. You never took them out because you might lose them. And you go to the average high school and half the pickup trucks in the parking lot had a loaded rifle hanging in the back window. And nobody got shot in school in those days, did they? You probably didn't hear about this, but the kids at Columbine High School that shot everybody, you know, were very strong believers in evolution. They did the shooting on Hitler's birthday on purpose. They shot Isaiah Scholes just because he was black. Hitler hated black people, so so did they. This was evolution-motivated shooting. And right after the shooting, Rosie O'Donnell caught on her TV program and said, See, we need more gun control. Uh, Rosie, those kids broke 18 gun laws going into that school. I don't think two more gun laws would have slowed them down. See, Rosie can't figure it out. But one guy figured out the whole thing and put it on the spare tire cover on his van. I saw that. I said, man, I have got to get a picture of this. This explains everything. He said, blaming guns for Columbine is like blaming spoons for Rosie O'Donnell being fat. <laughs> it's not the spoon's fault, Rosie, okay? <laughs> and it's not the gun's fault either. Yeah, blame the gun. That's brilliant. SAT scores have plummeted since 1963. Twice in the last 40 years, they have dumbed down the test. They made the test dumber. So the scores would go back up. Teen suicide rate's gone crazy. Now look, if I told you if you kissed a frog, it would turn to a prince. You say, no, frogs don't turn to princes. How many of you ladies got your husband by kissing a frog? Come on, let's see. Looks like only about three, okay? See, it doesn't happen very often, but in the textbooks it does. We started off like an amoeba and slowly evolved to a frog and very slowly became a prince. <laughs> it's the same fairy tale. See, if the frog turns to the prince quickly, we all know it's a fairy tale. But if the frog turns to the prince slowly, oh, no, that's modern science. No, I'm sorry, that's still a fairy tale, okay? Even more of a fairy tale. The difference, though, is not a kiss. That won't do it anymore. Today, boys and girls, if you want to turn your frog to a prince, you have to have a super-duper special high-powered magic ingredient called billions and billions of years. How many have ever heard that before? Billions of years ago. It's in all the textbooks. It's on TV. It's in the magazines. It's in National Pornographic. A geographic, I mean, billions and billions of years ago. They talk about it like a, some kind of fact of science, you know. Here's a fourth grade textbook. It says, many millions of years ago. Now, wait a minute. If anybody ever says that to me, I say, uh, excuse me, were you there? I'll say, no, of course I wasn't there. And I'll say, now, do you know the earth is millions of years old? I mean, is this really part of science? Is this something we can observe and study and test and demonstrate? They'll say, well, no, but everybody believes the earth is millions of years old. No, they don't. Most Americans believe the earth is less than 10,000 years old and God made it. Less than 15% are ever evolutionists in, or atheists in the test that they take, in the surveys. The majority of Americans do not believe the earth is millions of years old. Now, it's true that slightly more than half of the scientists believe in evolution. That's true. I agree. But that doesn't make it true. It's true they believe it, but what they believe is not true. See, just because a bunch of scientists believe something, that doesn't mean anything. 
There was a time when the scientists thought the planets go around the earth. The scientists used to teach a big rock will fall faster than a little rock. They used to teach if you're sick, you have bad blood. Take out your blood and you will get better. There were special places all over America to get your blood taken out. You could tell where they were because they had a white pole with a red stripe around it. The barber was the blood letter. And right beside George Washington, when they were bleeding him to death, was a Bible that told him the life of the flesh is in the blood.